In our world today, many people are claiming that our country doesn't really have a Christian faith and that the Bible has no place in our history. Well, our next guest says that the Bible has played an essential role in our history and in his new book, 100 Bible Verses That Made America. Dr. Robert J. Morgan demonstrates how the Bible has literally shaped our nation from the Mayflower all the way to the moon. Dr. Robert Morgan, welcome to Real Life. Thank you, Amy, so much. Welcome back to Real Life. I love being here. Man, you are one of our favorite authors. You write and it just, it shifts something in our thoughts and it challenges us and grows us. This book, I could not put it down. It is so easy to read. The nuggets and the truths that you bring out are just phenomenal, all about scriptures and American history. Yes, American history is permeated with scripture from the very beginning, even up till now. Mm -hmm. And everybody is trying to push it out. And the textbooks are pushing it out. And the secularists and the media are pushing it out. They want other agendas to come in yes. and to take credit for things that happened in this nation. But to remove the Bible from American history is like pulling the pedestal from out from under the Statue of Liberty. Wow. You really just cannot do it. So I wanted to tell easy to read stories yes. that you can read to your children or you can give to your governor mm -hmm. that will demonstrate wonderful experiences in American history when the Bible has made a big difference. Oh, this is huge. You said the founders of the United mm -hmm. States of America revered the Bible because it reflected their awareness of God's authority authority over the nations, even with the inauguration of George Washington. Yes, because when he was, I was just in New York at the very site where he was inaugurated president, wow. and uh, his inaugural Bible is there. So he wanted to be inaugurated. He opened the Bible, placed his hand. It was on a balcony uh, in Wall Street, uh, really at the old federal building. And he placed his hand on Genesis 49, which tells the story of Jacob blessing those 12 tribes who were going to become a great nation. And as soon as he took the oath of office, he bent over and he kissed the Bible. He, he knew. He kissed the Bible. He, he kissed the Bible and the Amazing. crowd erupted because he knew that the real founding document of our country was not the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, as hallowed as those are, it was the Bible from which the authority came. It was the Bible that made the difference in the founding of America. Let's talk about some of the other founding fathers. I mean, this book is just loaded with richness of American history. And it, you're right, it's so easy to read. I started highlighting and had to stop because I was literally highlighting every page and every line because it's, you're right, the, the world is trying to take it out. Mm -hmm. But this is our very, these are our roots. Yes, Samuel Adams, for example, was a zealous Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, George Washington, they're saying now that he was a deist, but there is no evidence he was a deist, mm -hmm. who is someone who done really basically a kind of agnostic. He was an Episcopalian who was a man of prayer, who read sermons, who knew his Bible, and he told the state governors right after uh, the Constitution was established that they were to pray for their people uh, to become like Jesus because he said, unless we do so, we can never hope to be a happy nation. Wow. And John Adams was a deep, devout believer of scripture. And even the ones who were anti-Christian like Thomas Paine and Ethan Allen, they had a thorough knowledge of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, Amy, I'm not saying that all of the founding fathers were uh, paragons of virtue or even uh, that they were all born again Christians, mm -hmm. but they knew the Bible mm -hmm. and they were influenced by the Bible. And even Thomas Jefferson, who took out parts of the Bible, so revered the ethical teachings of Christ mm -hmm. that he made a special collection of them. So you can't remove the Bible from the impact that it had on the founding fathers. Well, and even uh, some of our universities today, you have in here details about Harvard, about Princeton, mm -hmm. and the Great Awakening. If there had been no Great Awakening, the Great Awakening was the nationwide revival mm -hmm. that swept over the colonies, and George Whitfield was a great preacher, and 80% of the 
people of the colonies heard him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the first great celebrity in American history. But that, the Great Awakening solidified the colonies morally and emotionally and politically and paved the way for a desire for liberty which led to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Independence. Without the Christian revival known as the Great Awakening, there would not have been an American Revolution. And then after the American Revolution, there was another Great Awakening, a second revival, it's called the Second Great Awakening, that solidified the morality of the new nation. So America was literally born between the first and second great awakenings, great biblical revivals wow. that swept over our land. Okay, I feel like we're in that tension again right now, mm -hmm. politically, in the state of our country, and also spiritually, the state of our country. I feel like something is wakening up. There's a movement, there is a revival. And then here we are with this, you know, we're about to, you know, vote for a, a president again. And the tensions are high. What do you think? Yeah, this is a political year, and we wanted this book to come out to encourage people. It is nonpartisan. This isn't a Republican book or a Democratic book or an independent book. It's just a nonpartisan book that tells stories mm -hmm. because God has helped this nation in the past. Wow. And there is a verse that says, will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? And I'm praying that the pages of this book will just be paper that will kindle a fire yes. that will help the revival movement that I think is beginning just blaze all the more brightly. Yes. And it's easy to read, but the stories here, just look at the footnotes. We have done so much research to tell okay. people the impact the Bible has had on the events and the individuals of American history all throughout the history of the United States of America. I mean, this even got all in my business as far as people in the pulpit pastors yes. and government. Can you share a few stories? Yeah, the colonial uh, preachers who came from the Puritans laid the foundation for liberty because they preached liberty in Christ. You know, Amy, many of the ones who came to America in the 1700s were fleeing religious persecution. Mm -hmm. And they were, America is the only country in the history of the nation which was basically established by colonialist coming who were well-educated, many of them at Cambridge University, the best lawyers, the best preachers, the best scholars that England had were driven out because they were Puritans. And they came and established Boston. Wow. And uh, based upon the pilgrims, then you had the Puritan migration. And out of this came the great preaching and the pulpits mm -hmm. of the Puritans. They preached religious liberty because that's what they came here for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that gave people here a great desire for independence mm -hmm. and for liberty. And without the preaching of those biblical texts about liberty by people like Jonathan Mayhew and you know, all of the great colonial preachers, uh, Jonathan Edwards and, and John Witherspoon, those sermons circulated and people read them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were printed. And, so with the great awakening and the preaching from the pulpits, that paved the way for America to come into existence as a place where human rights were respected, where religious freedom was available, and where people said God has given to us, our Creator has endowed us with certain unchanging eternal rights as human beings. Yes. And these are yes. biblical concepts upon which, are, and, and there are specific stories, mm -hmm. you know, about how Bible verses at these different points impacted our leaders. Every single chapter that you have, a hundred to be exact, yeah. you have the very first thing is a scripture. Are our religious liberties under attack right now? They are. Uh, we've, uh, we can see the time when for us to maintain biblical positions will first of all lead to the erosion of the freedoms we have, mm -hmm. and then it's going to lead to threats against our very freedom. Mm -hmm. And if we go on without a revival mm -hmm. and secularism takes over, mm -hmm. which is pushing so hard, mm -hmm. I mean, it is so intolerant against Christians. Mm -hmm. Secularism and the media and the educational system and the political and judicial systems can tolerate everything except, except 
for the Word of God. Wow. And they are trying to push it out of our schools and trying to push it out of our uh, public arenas and trying to push it out of our government. And I'm going to push it right back in yes. with every ounce of strength that I have. Amen. We've got to push it back in. And that's what I want to do with this book. I'm just trying to push it back in because mm -hmm. the story is indisputable and the stories are just incredible to know. Every school child and every mayor and governor mm -hmm. and legislator in America should know yes. the stories in this book yes. because this is history. And without it, America would not be, as John Witherspoon said, the shining city on the hill that it needs to be wow. to proclaim liberty to the nations. I'm agreeing with you that we push it back. You know, when things are trying to be pulled and taken away from us, that we as believers, that we stand and we fight the good fight mm -hmm. of faith and we stand for, for what's right and true and just and fair. Thank you so much for this book. It is I mean, it is a game changer, this book. It is so easy to read. It is capturing the stories. I want to hear about the moon story when we come back.